So here we've got a question where we need to find y of x of this third order linear differential equation. Now it's third order because our y, our derivative of y is the third derivative. So let's just rewrite this as y triple prime plus y equals e to the x. Okay. Now, we're used to second order linear differential equations. We've done quite a lot of videos on those. Now we look at the third order. So what we're looking for is a solution uh, in two parts. So our y of x equals our y h of x. That's our homogeneous solution. That's when this is set to zero. And we're going to add to that our particular solution that is when we try and solve with e to the x. Okay, now let's have a look first at our particular solution. That's looking like it could be the easiest place to go because our e to the x, when we're taking derivatives of that, is pretty straightforward. So y, p of x, our particular solution, or particular integral, whichever one you want to call it, it's going to take the form of something like k e to the x because we've got an e to the x here we've got a one there which obviously we don't write but for the derivatives we're not sure what this constant for k is going to be for our particular solution so that's what we're going to assume to start with and now what we're going to do is take the third derivative of this so we can plug in into here so our y triple prime of our particular solution well, e to the x, taking the derivative of that is always e to the x. So this constant will always stay as k. So our third derivative is also k e to the x. OK, so now all we've got to do now is plug that into here and do matching coefficients. So k e to the x, that's our particular solution for our third derivative. And our y is just k e to the x. So that's our original uh, form of our answer, and that equals e to the x. So all we're going to do now is just divide through by e to the x, and then we'll get, so divide this by e to the x, divide this by e to the x, divide this by e to the x, and now we'll get k plus k equals 1, 2k equals 1, k equals 1 half. So therefore our particular solution we can write up here that equals one half e to the x. Okay, so now we're going to look for our homogeneous solution. Rub this off the board because that's going to be a little bit more involved and let's see where that takes us. Okay, now let's find our, our homogeneous uh, function for our general solution. So what we're going to do now is set this to zero. So y h of x, that leads us to y triple prime plus y equals zero. Okay, so even though it's a third order linear differential equation, here it's normal business when trying to solve this, so we need to find the auxiliary equation. So y triple prime plus y equals zero. So that's just going to lead us to lambda cubed plus 1 equals 0. And now we need to solve for lambda. And of course, lambda is cubed here, so we're going to have three solutions. So how are we going to factor this out? Well, lambda cubed plus 1, we can't do it direct. So, But we do know that minus 1 is a solution. So minus 1 cubed is minus 1 plus 1. That's going to give us 0. So we can factor out a lambda plus one and then multiply that by lambda squared minus lambda plus one and that equals zero. So multiply this out, you'll come back to this. Okay, so we know that lambda equals minus one, that's one solution. So to make that zero, now we need to make this bit zero. So now let's ignore this bit and just concentrate on this. OK, now we can't factor this one out, um, but what we can do is we can take the square. 
So if we go lambda minus one half, and then square that. So if you multiply that out twice, you'll get to lambda squared minus lambda, but then you'll have gained a quarter. So minus a half times minus a half is a quarter. So now we need to subtract a quarter. So we've kept that now. So this bit here is still the same as this bit here. And now we just add one and that equals zero. Okay, let's just add these together and bring them to the other side. Let's just do that. Lambda minus one half squared equals, well here we'd have three quarters. So bring it to the other side, we got minus three quarters. Okay, now we're gonna to need to take the square root. So we're looking at an imaginary value answer. So now square root, this side, square root this side. So now we get lambda minus one half equals, so square root of this. So if you take out an i, that will still leave us with the three on top. So our imaginary unit, and then square root of three, and then square root of four is two. So that's our solution there. But don't forget, because we've taken the square root, we need to have a plus or minus. Okay, now solve for lambda, that's pretty straightforward now. So lambda equals one half, bring this half over to the side, plus or minus i root three over two. So that's our other lambda solutions. So let's write them out individually. So plus i root three over two, and lambda equals one half minus i root three over two. Okay, now we're ready to put in our trial function. Okay, so now we're going to plug in our homogeneous function here using our solutions for lambda. So I'm going to do them all as exponential with these as our powers of the exponential. So it's going to look something like this. So this is a minus one, so that's minus x, that's straightforward. Now these are going to look a little bit more complicated, but not forgetting my constant, of course. Now these are a little bit more complicated. So I've got another constant, e, all of this in the indice of our exponential. So it's a half plus i root 3 over 2, and that's all with x. And then the other one, obviously, is the minus version. So that's C E to the one half minus I root three over two X. Okay, and obviously that's set to zero because it's our homogeneous. Now, this looks a little bit messy. We could stop there, that is still a legitimate answer, but there's more we can do. These two powers here of our exponential they look a little bit like uh, complex numbers, Euler's formula, and maybe we could use sine and cosine instead. So remember Euler's formula was z equals e to the alpha plus i beta. So we could change this into some sort of format for our solution. So here, of our e to the alpha plus i beta, we've got alpha would equal one half, and here, beta would equal root 3 over 2. OK, so using that, we can now substitute these for our uh, sines and cosines. So now our yh of x is still a e to the minus x. We're not going to do anything with that. That's fully, that's all good. Constant for b, I go with b. And then we need our e to the alpha, which is e to the half. And then we can have cosine of root 3 over 2x. And then add the other one, which is now c, e to the half, sine of root 3 over 2. Let's not forget, our, squeeze our x in there. 
So that's now our homogeneous uh, form of our answer. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to keep that in a box. And we've got our particular solution here. So now our y of x. So y of x equals half e to the x. And then we're going to add this onto it. So plus a e to the minus x. We can leave that as it is. And then all of these. So plus b e to the one half cosine of root 3 over 2x plus c e to the one half sine of root 3 over 2x. And that is our general solution or our third order linear differential equation. Okay.